Sometimes I lay under the moon. I thank God I'm breathing. Then I pray, don't take me soon. I am here for a reason. Sometimes in my tears I drown, but I never let it get me down. So when negativity surrounds, I know someday it'll all turn around. Cause all my life I've been waiting for, I've been praying for, for the people to say that we don't want to fight no more. There'll be no more war, and our children will play one day. Right, Mr. the laws, we're going to look at the laws and the rulings, okay? So obviously what we've read, they said these are the ordinances, the Mishpatim, that you are to set before them, Exodus 21.1. Now, let's just back up a bit. Last week we, we looked at Yetro, we looked at leadership, we looked at how to, to manage, how to construct, okay? And that's where Israel received the, the Ten Mitzvot, as we know as the Ten Commandments, okay, at Mount Sinai, okay. And remember one thing that we all should always remember our leaders in our prayers, hallelujah. And what a wonderful work they're doing, and as, you know, Pastor Gary is doing, you know, the Father's led him to do to the vision he has, and we should pray for him and for his family. Well, hallelujah. So this week, God, Yahuwah gives specific legislations and laws for the Mishpati. Now I'm going to go through a bit about, you know, some legal stuff as well that we use nowadays as well. And how is that fixed with the scriptures? And before what Pastor Gary says that the laws that we are using in this nation, in any nation, it's all come from the Torah. So the legalistic call the Mishpatim, which means judgments as well, okay, they are intended to guide the daily lives of his holy nation in justice and righteousness. Remember the Torah is the instruction and the guidelines of the Father that we live by, okay, and as, we, as Gary pointed out, uh, you know, if we have so many millions of people and there's no laws and regulations, how are we going to... How, how, how are we going to rule them? How are we going to, um, you know, shake them? How are we going to um, deal with that? There'll be chaos on the roads, and even the even the traffic lights deal with, uh, with 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 the cars, don't they? That's what they're there. Nobody's there to tell you, no, wait, now you can go. Wait, now you can turn. No, the traffic lights are there to give us um, orders. Yeah, what was that? Sets boundaries. Absolutely, absolutely. So once we were slaves, okay. When you acquire a Hebrew or a Jewish bondsman for six years, he shall work in the seventh year and he shall go free. So we know the principle of the seventh year, which is, is we, as we know it as the sabbatical year or the year that we set the slave free. And, we've got, and I'll go into the back of the sabbatical year as well. Since the Israelites had just been released from slavery, the first of Yahoo's Mishpatim deal with servants and slaves. Okay, a lot of people do use this word quite very um, horribly. That did, did Yahweh actually introduce slavery and so forth? And we won't go into that too much detail. According to the elders, the six years that a slave is obligated to work represents the 6,000 years that we will work to serve. Yahuwah. The seventh year of freedom represents the messianic age, the thousand years when we will rule and reign from Yerushalayim. When Messiah, who will sit on the throne of his earthly father, David, as we know him by David. Okay. Several verses later in this passage, the painful experience of the Israelites in Egypt, or we call it as Mitzrayim, okay, I highlighted again this time to provoke empathy for the foreigner. Yahuwah commands the Israelites that foreigners be treated with kindness and respect. And that is whole duty, not just of us, but of mankind. That we respect each other, our foreigners, our brethren, and so forth. 
then you shall neither mistreat a stranger nor oppress him. For where, for where we were strangers in the land of Mitzrayim, in Exodus 22, 21. Now in total, the, the parasha uh, Mishpatim contains 53 mitzvah commands and 23 authoritative commandments and 30 prohibitions. Now the word prohibition means ban. Okay. And most of these words I've, I've, I've checked it up just to get the, uh, the definition of it as well. Okay, so I'll be going through some definitions and stuff like this. Sorry, okay. Yes, go on, sister. Um, and 23 authoritative commandments. And, then and we've got 30 prohibitations, okay. which means bans. In our days, it's called compensation. Yes, and I'll go into that in a bit more. Yes, my brother. From that time, his wife, uh, young Joe, was playing tenfold. From that time to that. Yeah, yeah. So he was playing tenfold. That's right, that's right. Absolutely. Not just wife, but ten. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if you know, there's a legal term called restitution, which I'm going to go through as well. So remember, people, at that time, not only forgiveness was enough, you have to pay the person. Okay, so I'm going to go into restitution, what the terminology means. It is a legal term which is used, obviously, today. And, we'll, and I'll go into that in a bit later. Okay. Now, the series of laws, also called the Covenant Code, by some Bible scholars, specify penalties for various violent crimes. Now, when I do the, the Torah portion, I always like to say, what are we going to take from here? What is the lesson for me? And I hope that today, what is the lesson for us and for you to take? Now, specific, specifies penalties for various violent crimes, such as murder, kidnapping, assault, premeditated, meaning forethought and planning. Yeah? Hence, that's why we hear that nowadays we call... Um, Organized crime because crime is now organized. You don't go in there for force for, like that. You meditate, you plan things. That's what it's called. Organized crime, forethought and planning, murder, <coughs> kidnapping, striking, or even cursing a parent. Even cursing a parent. All carries the death penalty. Boy, you know this. Wherever I go, all I can hear is so many children cursing, man. If, this, if, if today, we, if the Father says, man, there will be no children around this planet, I guarantee you that. You know what I mean? There will be all death penalties out there. There will be, yes, absolutely true. And Exodus 21, 17, And he who cares, curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. But hey, that's not the, the case nowadays. Because we, we live in a time where... As, we, as believers, we forgive. That's who we are. Yes. The kids picked up on that command, that prohibition, matched up with the fifth commandment. Yes. That you should honor your father and mother. Absolutely. That's what made that commandment so just it, uh, that that sin of murdering your father and mother is such a sin because you're commanded to honor your father and mother. In fact, many of these rulings mirrored back to the ten commandments, and the, the kids picked up on. And why is the fifth commandment so important? <coughs> honor your mother and father. But then it says, if you honor your mother and father, 
that he will prolong your days. That means he'll add years to your days. So that's the blessing as well. But because the mother and father are the figure of Yahuwah, is the face of the father. Do you know that? That's why in most cultures we esteem our parents, mother and father, so much because they say they are the face of God. That's true, that's right, it's a green sister, that's right. But now we're living in a society and a culture that that's not relevant, that's not the case. We've come away from that. They don't see the Father, the Elohim in, in them. So laws were also given regarding how to make reprobation. Like I said, it means compensation. For assault, injuries caused by animals as well as damage to crops or livestock. They prohibit the ban, seduction of virgins, the practice of sorcery, bestiality, mm. we read. Yes, my sister. Slave actually actually means servant really. Mm. Another word in the testament is bond servant, it's the yes, same word. Same. So you're actually a servant. So in this country, mm. many people have employment as a servant. And the rules in here are very extremely applicable to now. Yes. Because as a person who has servants in the house, they're not your property, is what this this portion is yes. teaching you. They may be servants, but you don't own them. They're not your property, so you cannot abuse them. You are responsible for their care, you call it in law, duty of care. Absolutely. You have a duty of care to that servant that you are to love them, care for them as a member of your house. They eat the same food as you. Yes. They have the same kind of bed as you. They sleep under your roof. They, if they drink water, they drink the same water as you. You don't give them anything less. So it's extremely relevant, it snaps over today's culture. Absolutely, and just to add on to that, the place where you work as well, isn't it the employer's duty of care that they got these laws in place so you have health and safety laws, yes? Discrimination laws, yes? To protect your rights. Absolutely, to protect your rights as an individual so that you know where you stand if anything happens. I think it was Mika, Mika said, that these rulings are given to protect us. Absolutely, to protect us. So what is the father is doing there now? What's happening now, the father's already placed them, put them in place. So it's nothing new, my sister. There's nothing new. It's just that we live in the system. Old. It's just, there's nothing yeah, old there's nothing about absolutely, it. Absolutely, sorry, there's nothing old about it. It's just that we've just changed it a bit. You know, nowadays we call it ABH, GBH. You know, manslaughter nowadays, it's, you know, the scripture already tells us that. And we saw beasti bestiality, cross species, sexual activity between human and non human animals. Even laws for that as well. And the father despises that as well. So now we see there's nothing new. Exactly. It's not new. It's been going on for a long time. Idolatry and mistreating the disadvantage of society. So, real quick. Yes. It was. It's really interesting. We're reading this Torah portion, and I put out last night um, a news article on the BBC about a witch that mutilated a, fee, a, a young child's genital parts and put it out there in the food. Yeah. It's, in, it's on the. It's on the Harvard group. <laughs> And it's the first ever case, wow. and it's been judged, the law is dealing with it, but we're actually seeing it now, where women are mutilating young daughters, 
genital parts and putting it out there in the food system. Yeah. So most pe most cases, well, most people say it's more of a cultural thing than anything. But obviously, it, it is against the law, isn't it? And what does this Torah portion say should be done to a witch? She should be killed. Killed. Yeah. But are we going to do that? Yeah, keep Torah, though, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then that means we'd have to dis we would have to kill our children as well if they mistreat. So we, go. What is this idea? Well, it's according to the law. If it's according to the law, it needs to be in that one's right in the eyes of the judge. Shouldn't be the parents' job to tell the children, look, you shouldn't do this all else. Yeah. What's what is the right and wrong? Because the scriptures do say. Yeah, trying to put child in the way. Yeah, yeah, good, good. See, where the law teaches that we should basic capital punishment, yes. there is always one stage before that correction. Mm -hmm. The whole process of prison is to go through a process of regeneration. Yeah. Right? They're meant to go in there and learn how to live. We don't know the story about this woman. Is it possible that she could repent? Is it possible that if she knew Yeshua, she would, because Rachel Brown was a witch, and she's written so, or is it Rebecca Brown, was a, is a, or was a witch. She practiced witchcraft, became a high-ranking witch across Europe. Her books tell you all the things that she's seen, and she's seen how she's communicated with the devil. She's turned around, and she's a passionate Christian now. So if she can turn and serve Yeshua, and in the scriptures, there are other warlocks who have wanted to know Yeshua as well. So it's possible that she can regenerate. So, you know, just killing them off outright, I totally, I don't disagree with the Torah. But it should really, before you judge, look at yourself. Have you done the same sin? Is it possible that we can forgive and re regenerate this person before we go and kill them off the earth? Yes, Torah tells us to take certain actions. Yeshua, um, when he was put in that situation and um, the woman was being judged, mm. obviously she, she should have been stoned to death for her man. Yeshua turned it around and said, obviously, you know, the, who hasn't sinned? Cast the first stone. Yeah. So she was a practical thing about, you know, we have to look within ourselves and we have to judge ourselves first mm -hmm. before we catch judgment. Yeah, absolutely. The Torah says what you deserve. Yeah. You deserve death. That's right. The Torah says, Yah is not willing that any should perish. perish. So it's not his, the, the impression the church has given in his preaching is that God's going to judge you. God's not happy with that. No, 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 no. And we come down with the fire. And that is the penalty. The penalty for sin is death. But the gift of Yahweh is life. Yeah, the way to sin is death. But the gift of Yahweh is life because absolutely. Yahweh is love. And real love would rather see you change than stay in your ways. Mm, absolutely. But if you won't change, you will die. Absolutely, absolutely. Anything uh, else on that? Anybody's uh, thoughts on that? Well, the infractions of these laws often carry the severest of penalties, death by stoning since Yahuwah wanted to keep peace and order within the camp. But is it more than that? Yahuwah has genuine concern for justice and the well-being of the individual. For instance, if a widow or fatherless child is to cry out to Yahuwah because of someone's ill-treating them, Yahuwah promised he will pour out his fierce wrath upon the oppressor and killed them so that their wives would be widows and their children fatherless. Exodus 22, 22 to 24. The law of restitution. Now we're looking at the law of restitution. The law of restitution is actually like compensation. Say, say for instance, I, I killed Dwayne's dog. Now it's irreplaceable. Yep, because it's not the same. But the law restitution says that forgiveness is not enough. I can't say, oh, I'm sorry, please forgive me. That's right. No. 
I have to get the same or a similar dog, the same breed, okay, get that, give it to him, okay, and then we can ask for forgiveness. I have to repay him back for his loss. So the law of restitution, now I've got, uh, the, the definition here is that the law of restitution is the law of gains based recovery. When a court orders restitution, it orders the defendant to give up his or her gain to the claimant. When a court orders compensation, it orders the defendant to pay the claimant for his or her loss. So sometimes when, you know, a lot of these claim today sort of thing and you got an accident, they offer you, oh, we'll, we'll give you the, your loss of your time from work, going to doctors, we'll give you the money, etc, etc. That's what it is, loss of your time, loss of your wages, loss, and so forth. Yes, my brother. Yes. yes.
So they had to represent them. And so these rulings were given to them. And they put rulings down so that they would remember, first of all, where they're coming from and, and the destructive lifestyle that they were coming from. And secondly, so that they would constantly or perpetually keep this back in practice so and they get through their generations these kind of conduct and practices so that future, no one have an excuse to say, no, we did not know. So yeah. that made it make sure that it was recorded. And that's why we've got it today. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. Yeah. Right. Like we said earlier, if there were no rules, the, the whole world would be in chaos. Absolutely. Everyone would be living how they want, when they want, do what, as they please, as what is going on in the world. Our children in school now, I'm sorry I'm going on. Yeah, yeah, sure. Good. But our children are being taught some contrary doctrine. Yes. Right, some pervert teaching yes. about homosexuality and how it's acceptable. These things are not acceptable. Mm. And they even teach about, I don't have to do it in school, but they practice this same thing, this reality. Yes. And they say this is good conduct. <laughs> this is how the world lives. Mm. Right? This is why I have had these words recorded so that humanity would have no excuse to say that we have never known how to live upon them. Yeah. If you remember in the beginning, Brishit, it says, in the beginning, the world was without, was without form and void. So there was no form to it, and it was just empty. There was chaos, disorder. So what Yahuwah does in the next few verses is to begin to give everything form, shape, purpose. And he says, fit for purpose. In the King James translation, it was good. But it actually means fit for purpose. Father is not reactive, he's, he's, preempt, he's, pre, he's preemptive. So from the beginning, they come out of chaos, disorder. He now begins to put them into ranks, into forms, into order. And then where they were void of any knowledge, because you rightly said, they did have some knowledge, but 430 years has gone on. Yeah. Of them growing up generation after generation after generation, in Egypt, Mitzrayim, mm -hmm. and now they've been brought out into the wilderness of sin, mm -hmm. where Yahweh says later on in the word, you were given the Torah as a schoolmaster. Right. They were put in the school. That's right, that's right. Where you're now going to learn an education about me. So in all of this, <laughs> so in all of this, they now have to be given the knowledge of him. So nobody can say, I didn't know. Absolutely. Once you've given the law, the precedent, as we say in law, it's called precedent. Yeah. The precedents are there. So now, anything you do after can be revealed as sin or not sin. Mm -hmm. Because the precedent was there. Mm -hmm. So now, nobody has an excuse. See, what happens later on in the book of Judges, we fall back into this period of no prophets. Nobody really leading the people. Yeah. Every now and then, a deliverer comes up, but Israel, according to the word, it says, in those days, every man did what was right in his own sight, in his own eyes. So if you want to go and lie down with a dog, who's to say you shouldn't do it? That's the culture we're doing now. We're living in that time where every man is doing right in his own eyes. And the law changes to the people as opposed to the people conforming to the law. Absolutely. Go on, brother, you just want to say something? Yeah. When we look at some of these, um, mm -hmm. the, the, the pervertness of man, it was about paganism. Mm -hmm. So it was, yeah, I was trying to say, listen, I don't want you to follow them. I want you to be leaders. I want come on. you to come on top sin. Yes. And what was happening when he was also giving the laws, when we look into even Abraham, we see when he came out to Haran and so forth. Mm -hmm. You can see when you when you when you look, it was part of the law that a man could cohabit with an animal. That was all simple. These people was now you can see this contrary to what when the law was given that any man lies with an animal, he should die. Mm -hmm. And we can see of the enemy, his law is, no, you can do what you want to do, anything contrary yes. to the Creator. 
So with everything, as we said today, we can see this year Crip side is the, the world coming into the church and changing the church instead of who is in the church, yes. people. We are standing firm and we are changing the world for coming in. Anybody yes from the concept of um, essential right to the right if you want to have um, some right to be the number of the um, right if you come one step first your 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 privilege to be the judge right in the life come one step further yeah right not just you can if you want yeah, yeah. some right to be that okay okay so, I want to just back up what Brother Ishmael was saying um we always talk they always talk about precepts and judgments Psalms 147 verses 19 and 20, based on what my brother was saying about Israel were meant to be leaders. They were meant to be influencers. That Israel was meant to be a light to the nations. That's right. And it says in Psalms 20, Psalms 147 verse 19 and 20, he reveals his words to Yaakov, his laws and rulings to Israel. He has not done this for other nations. They do not know his rulings. Hallelujah. Because Israel was meant to be the teacher of the nations. Yahweh teaches Israel, Israel becomes a light to the nations, the prophet Isaiah says. Anybody say else any wants to say something? I remember some time back Gary posted something on the Arbor group. This young man he, he said he married a snake. <laughs> and it's yeah, yeah, in some cultures that exist. And it's serious, brethren. Serious, there's a woman in India, she married a dog. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and also, I think that's posted as well, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, that was posted. Go on. So, uh, not too long ago, I posted in, uh, in the heart of uh, the origins, uh, basically exposing uh, Islam uh, and what happens and what takes place in that. One of the things in that they can have um, sexual relationships with animals, literally, said it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mohammed himself uh, performed a sexual act on a, a corpse. And um, when he was seen doing this, he was questioned and, uh, about what he was doing. And he covered the corpse with his jacket. Um, I can't remember what the, the, the excuse that he gave, but for me, that was just sick. I, I, you know, this, it just shows it to the level of what these other religions are, 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 are doing and what they um, receive us to be okay or you're right. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. Yes, sister. Then I'm slightly. Um, verse 23, 13. Um, it says, Careful to do everything I've said to you. Do not invoke the names of the gods. Do not let them be heard on the lips. So here's what it's saying. And um, like Baal and all of those other things, not even to speak their names. Yes, yes. So um, it's him and him alone. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, even even saying something like any other gods, you know, names and coming out of mouths. That's you know, that's just like abomination to the Father. We shouldn't be having our lips at all. It's my brother. And you have to say, people, the sister just says, how the enemy works. Yeah. We can do these name calling other gods without even knowing. Absolutely. Because when you look upon the days of the week, how there was formulas that all there was brought in that were prescribed to other gods, the months and the years, and so forth. So we have to do that's what I'm saying. When you study, it is good to know where you can go into and where you can't go into because the enemy, with when it comes to Yahweh. He says, I will weak at your ignorance. But once we start to study, he said, that's why we suffer. Mm -hmm. Because we don't want to study. We want, we want to, somebody to stand up and we want to just feed off the one on the front. But it is our duties yeah. as ministers as well as God and to um, lead people mm -hmm. to the, the right way. So, we have to, even when things sound unpalatable mm -hmm. or not, don't sound too right, I've never heard it like that before. 
if we say that we have this spirit of the Creator within us, and the Bible says this spirit will lead us into all truths. Just because you don't believe what I'm saying, that doesn't make it a lie. So we have got to be able to be bold enough to want to follow the, the way, the truth, and the light. Hallelujah. <clears throat> We talk about murder and kill. Remember the Bible says in, in the commandments, thou shalt not murder. What's the, difference, what's the difference between murder and kill? If anybody can tell me. What's the difference between murder and kill? Go on, sister. Murder. So if, if a soldier goes to war, is he, when he goes to destroy somebody, bam, bam, is he a murderer or does he kill? Because he's not really there to, to, to murder anybody. That's not his motive. But obviously because he's in the war, he's battling against the enemy. That is called killing. But when we murder somebody, it's like we say, it's premeditated, it's organized. You just want to, because you've got the vengeance and hate in you. So tear that person apart and get him. I want to I mess with that one. Yes, come on. Because in the scripture we just read, if you premeditated, if you thought about it, in yes. fact, one verse says, if, if it was night time, and it kind of sounds like, what does that mean? It's because you waited until night time. Yes. Well, it's what, that's what makes it a sin, that's which means that proves you, medica you meditated. Yes, but in a soldier, a soldier's training years in advance to kill somebody. Yes. He's premeditating, he's training how to kill you in six different ways. Right. Whether quick, soft, loud, quiet, so he is premeditated, mm -hmm. but he's doing it in the name of someone else. Mm -hmm. right. Every soldier right. is operating under that, on the screen. Right. Where you see the lawyers and the magistrates, they are surrounding the authority of the crown. Right. Okay. So in the name of the king or the queen, they're doing it, which makes it okay. <laughs> in the laws of the land. So are soldiers murderers then? So they're not considered murderers. No, but it is because it is yeah. they're premeditated, they're but they're doing it under the yeah. authority. Yeah of the crown. So their killing is actually covered. They will have license to kill, all yeah. soldiers, yes. in time of war. Time. But if it's not in time of war, that's murder, they can go to jail. That's right, yeah. Go on, give me a proverb. I was just in a mess over there, I guess. Right. So the generals of the army on the battlefield will have sent me, the army's there, to kill. Yes. So in my opinion, the blood is on the general's hands because he's got that man there. Absolutely. And another, another thing to add to it, the soldier did not go out on the battlefield on his own accord. They sent him. So it's not just one person saying, oh, I'm going to go. They all agreed, this is your instruction to go and do, to the point where you don't have any choice in the matter. If you don't go and kill, you go to jail. Yeah, that's right, that's right. It's crazy. It's the reverse. As a soldier, it's your job to kill. Brother, you want you have your hand up this way. Yes. I don't regard that as sin. So long as you're not the perpetrator. Yeah. If you're defending yourself from an attack, and you have to kill him, and it's self defense. That's right. But yes. If okay. you're premeditating, yes. Earlier, that's murder. The planning, the structure, the how you're going to do it, where you're going to do it, when you're going to do it, that is definitely murder. That is that's why I say the soldiers are murderers. Yeah. That, that's my personal opinion. It's murder. I don't care who said them, said them out there. Yeah. They know what they're going to do. <laughs> right, they're they're right. planning, they think that they get given the deadline. True. And they trade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because on top of all of that, they trade killers, they yeah. know how to do it. Yeah. That's murder. I'll come to you, Dwayne, <laughs> sister. Yes. Fire. We're getting good now, it's getting good now. Yes. <laughs> Alright guys, sorry. There's, there's parts of the family yes. where yes. you tell them to go into other nations yes. and kill right down to your children. Yes. Yes. Right, okay. So what would you classify that as? So the sister... Guys, sorry. The sister was saying, because you know in the, in, the, in, the, in the Torah, when Yahuwah ordered 
um, the Israelites and people to go and destroy and kill people. Yes, which he has done. Women, men, and children. She wants to know, how do you classify that? Is that murder? Is that killing? What is it? What do you classify that? Let's not forget the father sent the angels where the Gideon, I think it was Gideon. Yes. Man. Yes. So he sent angels to kill. Was it 180,000 in right. one night? That's right, yes. So he's even sent angels to kill. Yeah. You know, to save yeah. men going into battle. So yeah. I'm, I don't know. I don't know on that one. <laughs> it's, no, it's, it's really straightforward and simple. Yeah. We're kind of looking at it in the face. We're not saying it. Absolutely. They are an abomination. They're an abomination. That's when you read about Sodom and Gomorrah, yes. the children were raping people. There were Jamie Bollinger's all over the place that would not keep out kill We got Burger Bar, Johnson Crew, and yes. the kids are young kids. Yes, We've got a pandemic in Birmingham right now absolutely. where they're recruiting young kids as young as primary school for gangs. Yes. In, you go to Africa and you try and drive through some parts of Africa. Yes. It's the little kids with the clash the cars that are going to kill you. Yes. you don't, there's no conversation. They will just wipe you. With, with some of these nations, there is no negotiating with them. True. They will just eat you alive. Mm. Literally. Absolutely. Okay? Yes. Now they're on that. <laughs> yes, brother. And what I'm liking this. What just says, it was simple as this. Half of the nations, what Israel had to fight was because our remnant was left. Mm. The Kitsukites, the other side, the Jewish side, it was because half of the, when, when they were supposed to have killed, wiped out everyone. Someone was there and they grew up, and it's why we have the backlash today. Just to add on to my brother, I'm sorry to put it. The whole purpose, or the whole story of Purim, is all because there was a remnant left of the people mm. that were not entirely wiped out, and Haman was one of the descendants. Mm. He remembered. All right. The descendants, 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 descendants will remember. And the spirit is in them to exact revenge yes. against Israel. Father knows this. Hence why he says, do not leave one of the children alive. That's right. I was just going to say, the motive behind the killing is his king. So if, if it's self-defense, purely self-defense, you're defending your own life. Yes. That's not murder, that's a killing. That's right. If it's for greed, that's murder. That's right. If it's for revenge, that's murder. You know, if it's, if it's for any other reason, then a, then, a, then a pure reason. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Then it's, it's murder. That's absolutely. Absolutely. If the driving force behind you doing that, then it's murder. So how does that fit then? Because there's a scripture that says that we honour your leaders, so that because God has put them there. So, Theresa May, that guy in America, Trump, um, all yeah. of those people. Or Theresa. Um, so, how do you then square off um, what they're doing in the name that they're doing it with your own personal beliefs, but also your spiritual beliefs? Because, like, um, Donald Trump built the wall against Mexico. Um, um, Brexit or whatever, you've got your own opinion, which is fair enough, mm. but then there is, um, or, or is it a part of a bigger sort of prophetic movement that's going yeah. on and it's part of the puzzle, yeah. but how do you square, say for instance you don't believe in war, and you don't believe in fighting and stuff like that, how then do you square what they're doing in your name, um, and they're doing it under God's guidance in theory, because the scripture says that God has appointed the leaders. So how do you square? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I understand. Let me let's get a brother in first, and I ask. Then we answer your question. Let's get me. Yes. Let's right. get me. <laughs> <laughs> we're in the world, right? But we're not part of it. Come on. Now, how many tricksters out there? Trump. Poly what? <laughs> poly, poly tricksters. I like that. Oh. Poly, poly tricksters. <laughs> let's get down the camera. Poly tricksters. Here, here's what they do. When, they, when it's time to go, right, they come and sweeten our ears, yes. mm -hmm. sickle yes. our ears, mm -hmm. and tell us, I'm not sorry, I'm sorry to say that, a load of rubbish to convince us to vote for them. Yes. If you're a Labour, right, they will vote for Labour. If you're a conservative, democratic, yeah. 
But the bottom line is this. Lucifer is the master of this world, right? Trump is in his hands. They're puppeteers. They're puppets. Every one of them. I'm telling you, I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I'm saying in a long way, I don't vote. Yes. Yeah. I don't belong to any um, political um, organization. I have nothing to do with it. Why? I'll tell you why. Because I know that demons control these people. Yes. Yeah. And they go to speak with demons. Yes. Yeah. And then they see them for technology. Yeah, that's all these jets and guns and everything that you see them back. It was from their skills, the demonic skills. They, they, they're in allegiance with, right? And, and I don't want to labor on too much. But what I'm saying is this we cannot be taking part in the stuff that we see going on now. Brexit, how can Europe exit Europe? Because this country is built up of European people, so how are they going to exit themselves? Mm. That's like committing suicide. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, sister, in answer to, to your questions, to your question, it's simple don't be a part of and it is a prophecy, whatever's going on now with Brexit and all these things as well. And yes, the difference between us and them, they are with Hashatan. We are not. We have Elohim, Yahuwah in us. We, we are about love and peace. What's ever going on there? Hey, the devil's dealing with that. That's, that's his realm and that's his playground. So so can I, I'll go back to what you said. One of the presumptions you made was that they are under and doing Yahweh's work. Yes. That's the disconnect, is that they not, they're not making that profession. Exactly. We are commanded to pray for our leaders, but it doesn't say that the leaders are following Yahweh's will and seeking his will. They're seeking their own agenda and their own will. And we pray that through whatever they're doing, that Yahweh's hand will steer them like yes. Nebuchadnezzar. Yes. But Nebuchadnezzar did a lot of wickedness that you don't even read about in the Bible. But he was a bad ruler. He was terrible. He was a dictator. These leaders right now are set on their course with Hasatan. And it will play out. It will play in to Yahuwah's hands. So should we then take part in regards to having like Christian um, political parties? Or, so should we have like a father, what's MP? And, um, and that's should it. we participate in that way to have a voice? Or should we just... No, no. You should always be a voice heard. We should always have a voice. In fact, there is a Colin Rankin leads the Yeshua Party. He's active in politics, so we should, we are called to bear witness. We do we expect the whole country to vote for us? It's not going to happen. But Father never called for you to be the majority. You will always be the minority. He did call for you to bear witness against the nations. So when the judgment comes, they can't say we didn't know. That's our calling, that's it. Dwayne's got his hand up there. Um, just in regards to Father saying pray for your leaders, I can't believe for one second that he would want you to pray for the enemy. For somebody that is not righteous or who or doesn't care to keep his you know his commandments or his statutes, I can't believe that Father would want that. What I think he means by what he says pray for your leaders is somebody who is a part of um, of the great way. Do you know what I'm saying? Not, not somebody who, who's um, worshipping Satan. He's not a Satan. Why would they do that? Because he wants to get them out of where they are. Mm. And I think what it is again is when you really look at it, I, I don't open up letters, but I can use myself as a perfect example. I never would. And it was just my grandmother, normal mother, praying for me week after week, month after month year after year and look where I am now. So what we have got to say, like what we said earlier on, is if somebody do you wrong or uh, somebody breaks what we know as one of the commandments mm -hmm. and the commandment said is dead, we first have to look at ourselves and say, well, that could have been me. Or uh, I done this the other day what should have been dead as well. So it's about showing mercy. So we've got to recognize that nobody is out of the creators for us. And what he said is they are not there by themselves. I put them there. It's only that is which we hear. There's two roads and they are both taking the broad pathway. So yes, we've got to pray for those who are following Yahweh's 
informants and are real government and they are a minority as well as those where we see are totally gone astray. Mm -hmm. We still got to do like what Yeshua says, I'm gone away looking for that, that one I've left in 90 and 90. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, could you start to answer, answer further? So, yes, you know why I say now these people replace the power and they've got a seat and that's something. Yeah. Yeah. So they're listening to the other side, yeah. rather than Father. So, yes, Father allows them to lead. There's no reason they're in. Someone's only dark. Okay, I want to read two texts in connection with yeah. what, what Dwayne was just saying here. It's a good question. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. First of all, then I counsel that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all human beings, including kings. So that's not just talking about Hebrews here. Kings and all in positions of prominence so that we may lead quiet and peaceful lives, being godly and upright in everything. This is what Yahuwah, our deliverer, regards as good. This is what he meets. This is what meets his approval, it says. Then Romans 13, verse 1. Everyone is to obey the governing authorities, for there is no authority that is not from Yahuwah. And the existing authorities have been placed where they are by Yahuwah. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities is resisting what Yahuwah has instituted. And those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are no terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you like, and you can go on. So to illustrate this, and I'll, I'll start. When you think of the kingdoms of Egypt, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, they were tyrannical, abominable nations. But through the book of Daniel, we learn that Yahuwah decreed that all these nations should have their time and their reign. And he uses all these nations for his purposes. We are not the orchestrator. We are not the creator, the architect. We don't see how this plays into his plan. He does. He does. So, obviously. Yeah. So, I'm in agreement. Go on, sister. Yeah. I still think that we have, we are ahead. Yeah, and the influence yeah. through our prayers. Yes. So we just got to say that we should pray for our leaders. Whether or not they're doing whatever they're doing, Absolutely. we are required Absolutely. to pray for our leaders. I agree with that. Just kind of going back to the scripture where we talk when we were talking about murder and killing. Yes. There's a verse in um, Exodus twenty one where I think we might explain a little bit. It says, Whoso attacks a person and causes his death must be put to death. If it was not premeditated, but an act of God, sometimes there's an act of God yes. where God allows people to be put to death or murdered, and He takes responsibility of that. Well, in continuing from that, if say. Um, Naya accidentally reached out, saw her arm back and knocked Gary in the head, Gary fell back, Gary died. She didn't mean to kill me, yes. but death was a consequence of an accident. Yes. The law, the Torah, protects her and says, Gary's other brothers and sisters that want to take off her head will come after her. Mm -hmm. So to protect her, she has a city of refuge that she can go to and live out her rest of her life in peace. Not as a prisoner, not as an inmate, Freedom, where she's protected by the Torah from acts of vengeance. Right. And in that scenario, was that an act of God? The provision of what you've just stated, it yes. Be. It's an act of Yah protecting her. No, it was that an act of Yah that you felt that oh. felt in you? Yeah. It was an accident. <laughs> you know, it was an accident. It was unfortunate. Yeah. I wouldn't say it was the will of Yah. It was the act of God. Because God seems like death. Yes. Yeah, but it's, 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 when we 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 when
I know that there's like a hurricane coming. Yeah. And because of you escaping from me, and you fight and you outside, and it's the hurricane who to take your life. Yeah? We can define that. That now is the act of God. Yeah. But when we say that term, um, we're going to try to derive it that um, men who fight in an ability to kill you. And you fall and hit your head. That's what the Bible defines as um, an accidental death. And it means to kill you. Right? So we, that is clearly expect We will define it today as manslaughter. Yeah. I didn't plan it, I didn't mean it, but it happened. But when I'm planning to kill you, I'm looking at you and I'm saying, next week. <laughs> and I come next week and I see I'm there's too many people and I'm still saying I need to map this thing all properly. Till I get you, that's what is known as the yes. I think that, that question, I want to quickly deal with that question. Because that was actually a religious mindset at Yeshua's time. That if anything happened to you, it was because that was the will of God. If you were blind, yes. will of God. That's right, yes. And Yeshua came to show, no, it's not actually. This person may be blind, but I've come to heal that person. That's right. So before we allow that same religious spirit to creep into us, and it can do, people can, out of ignorance, think that, oh, it's the will of God that this person must have died. Some things are just accidents. Yes. But if we had faith, we could probably resurrect that person back to life. Hallelujah. Now we're going to see Yeshua move. That's right. That's, That's right. right. Dwayne, go on. Oh, no, you had your hand up there. Don't go too far from me, though. No, no, this is, this is exciting, guys. This is exciting. But before we move on, yes, I'd like to say, Dwayne, uh, even though they, yeah, yeah, who has not appointed them to be leaders, but I'd like to say, how come they're in position and I'm not? How come I'm not there and they are? Well, the Father does say, we pray for them regardless. Because maybe Yahuwah can save them, bring somebody out of there. Do you know what I mean? The Father can do so. Remember the scripture said, the Father's hand is not slack, that he cannot save anybody. Really really you know what I mean? <laughs> but you said, you, said, you said, how come they're in position and I'm not? Yes. The whole purpose of democracy is that you are in position. Everybody here has a right to vote. So they only represent your vote. How come I'm not running the show? <laughs> right, and you know, it's easy to become disheartened to think that yeah. my vote doesn't matter. But I grew up under the time of Martin Luther King that taught me my voice does matter, yes. my vote does matter. Yes, absolutely. So they only represent the will of the people. Mm -hmm. They're not there being your spokesman, they're voicing your voice to the courtroom. Absolutely. So if we choose not to vote, that's a personal choice, nice. yes. but your vote does matter. Hallelujah. So here's a, here's a, a, a prayer from King David himself for the leader. This is, what, this is what he prayed himself. Yeah. So, uh, Psalms 140. Rescue me, Yahweh, from evil people. Protect me from violent people. They plan evil things in their hearts. Mm -hmm. They continually stir up bitter yes. strife. They have made their tongues as sharp as a snake's viper's venom. Um, a snake's viper's venom is under their lips. Keep me, Yahweh, from the hands of the wicked. Protect me from the violent people who are trying to trip me off. The arrogant hide snares for me. They spread nets by the side of the road, hoping to trap me there. I said to Yahweh, you are my Elohim. Listen, Yahweh, to my plea for mercy. Yahweh, Yahweh, my saving strength, my helmet shielding my head in battle. Yahweh, don't grant the wicked their wishes. Make their blood fail so they one will cry. May their, may their heads of those who surround me be involved in the evil they spoke of themselves. May burning coals rain down on them. May they be flung into the fire, flung into the deep pits, never to rise again. Let slanderers find no place in the land. Let the violence and the evil be haunted relentlessly. I know that Yahweh gives justice to the poor and maintains the rights of the needy. The righteous will surely give thanks to your name, and the upright will live in your presence. Hallelujah. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, we're going to quick on move on as well. One, one last one for you, brother. Sometimes a warning for us to get 
of the body and this is part of body land. That's true. That is and right. If we're going to start taking parts of all of this, then we're part of body land. Yes. No yeah. matter how much you say we've crossed over, yes. I'm taking part in all of this, we may be going nowhere. Absolutely. Just I'm gonna yeah. I wanna I wanna, I wanna throw something in, it's a total different subject. Yeah. There has always been this argument within Christianity that oh we're not under the law, we're not under legalism. There are there are over six hundred and thirteen laws in this Torah. You can't keep all of them. You know, we're under grace. And the the, the stupidity of it, it's just ridiculous. But they will say, we obey the law of the land. So the laws of the Bible are too many, but the laws of the land, we do obey that. I'm a law-abiding citizen, we'll say. Yes, yes. But they don't even know what they're saying when they say that. When you ask the question, and you can Google this, yes. just in 2010, we had a record year for how many laws were made in that one year by these law lords. Yes. In the one year of 2010, we had over three and a half thousand laws created in England. Wow in just that one year. Now remember, how old is England? England's over 500 years old. Our legal system has well in excess of over 40 million laws. And you complain about 613. You're under a legal system of millions of laws, tens of millions of laws, in its legal system that goes back 500 years. But yet you say you're a law-abiding citizen, but you won't keep the law of Yahuwah. And yet they keep the law of the land, which is so many millions, but not the law of Yah Yahuwah. So when Yeshua says, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Absolutely. Compared to the four, what do you say, 400 million? Yeah. <laughs> Tens of millions. <laughs> America's got millions of laws in their Congress. Absolutely. Remember, the, the father made it so simple that the 613 mitzvahs, he narrowed it down to 10. And then narrowed it down to 2. Then he narrowed it down to 2. Then down to 1. Then down to 1. Which those 2 are the 10 commandments. The Shammai, Shammai, Israel, Adonai, Elohim. Those 2 are the, the, the commandments. Love the Lord your God Absolutely. and love your neighbor. Two commandments. Two commandments. Down to and one, just says, love Yahweh. These two commandments, all the mitzvahs hang upon these commandments. We don't read that. The first right. command, that first commandment, it, it talks about the first four commandments. And the neighbor is the next six commandments for our neighbors. Are they doing that commandments there? I don't understand these people. But hey, let's move on quickly because yeah. I've got so much things. This is exciting and I'm loving it. Wow. You know, when I, was, when I was studying this and I was writing this up, I thought, wow, I'm excited about this. So let's so relax now. Remember the Shabbat, the appointed times. Now, the parasha also reveals the law of the Shabbat, which is more than a Sabbath rest every seventh day. Now, I did talk about sabbatical year as well. Every seven years, the land is to enjoy a Sabbath rest called the, the Shimatai, the Shimatai. The Shemitah. The Shemitah year, yes, we call it the Shemitah year. The Sabbath year is also called the sabbatical year. Or the Shavi'i is the seventh year of the seventh year agricultural cycle. Even the Father knows that the land requires rest as well. So the agricultural year mandated by the Torah for the land of the Israelites. Israel, now Gary might know this. The last Shemitah year was Israel ended its seventh year of letting the land lie uncultivated in September 2015. Something so. Something yep. so. Something so. Something so. So that's the last one, okay. And Exodus 23 10 verse uh, 11 says, Six years you shall sow your land and gather in its produce. But the seventh year you shall let it rest and lay fallow, that the poor of people may eat. The father even instigated and introduced that even whatever's left out, that's for the poor. That's for the poor people that can come and eat. Right. May eat and what they leave, the beasts of the field may eat. Now, as well, these three pilgrimages, feasts, because remember, all these parasha is leading up to Pesach. The festivals are mentioned as a time when all adult Hebrews, Israelites, males, are to appear before Yahuwah, Pesach, Passover, Shavuot, Pentecost, and Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles. 
these are the free fees. I'm, I'm going to ask you that because we had a discussion a few weeks ago because we have seven festivals yes. mm -hmm. but here it's saying he wants us to do three. Right, okay. So what about the other four? I'm going, to okay. I'm going to come, but I'll let people... Yes, yes, yes. I want some of the kids to know this as well. Yes. How many feasts are there in total? Seven. Speak up, please. Seven. 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 Okay. There are three... How many four feasts? How many? Four, four feasts. Four. So we've got this... The, you've got the, the spring feast, which are coming up now. Four. And the four. fall, which we obviously call that okay. winter. Okay. How many spring feasts are we what's coming up now? So let's go through. We've got Pesach, these are 11. First fruits. Yep, any more? And how many in the winter time? Pentecost. Shavuot. Yes, Shavuot. That's right, so it's four uh, spring feasts. And the. Yes? Young people. Yes. <laughs> so how many we got there? Three. Seven, seven. total. Seven in total. But there is a there is a debate. There's not not yes. all of the Mohadims are feasts, but some are feasts and some are holy days. Now Gary might want to probably okay. say something on that. So. All of the feasts, they are all Moadim. The key word is appointed time. But there are three of the feasts where the men cannot miss. The men are, it's called pilgrim feasts. No matter where you are, you need to find yourself there. And that is, that is Pesach. That's going to be Pesach, Unleavened Bread, Shavuot. Sukkot, Sukkot, sorry. Pesach, um, Shavuot and Sukkot. Those are the three pilgrim feasts where it is your duty to be there to go to the holy place, in other words, to go to Yerushalayim. So in scripture, we see the Ethiopian eunuch traveling all the way from Ethiopia to go and keep the feast, okay? I'm sorry, he said there's three that men have to keep. Pilgrim feast, so Pesach is one, Shavuot, which we call Pentecost, and then Sukkot, Tabernacles. Right, and those are the ones where the men have to find themselves. Why? Because the men are the heads of the houses. They have, to, and if the men go, they will take their families. So what happened with Yeshua? Yeshua's family were already going. They were going, he had to go along with his family to keep the feast. It's a family occasion. The men are responsible to lead their families to Yahuwah. And that is why they have to go. But the men specifically have to go. If the family can't, the men have to go. Okay, so three times in a year we have to go to Yerushalayim. And obviously, you know, it's not, it's a very expensive trip. So it's ridiculous. We can't afford it. What do we do then? We can't afford it. So what does the men do then? What do you do? Yeah. And this was not a this is not a new problem. Yeah. This was actually existing at the time that people could not afford. So the rabbis acknowledged this, and this was something that was done for centuries, that the people were able still to keep the feast where they were. But, that, but they would turn their hearts spiritually and their minds towards Yerushalayim. Absolutely. Hence why we still do that. We would love to be in Israel right now, Absolutely. but we just do that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. okay. Do the best that you can. Absolutely. Absolutely. Any, anything? Yeah. Brother, I was just going to say, when the, when the Israelites were wandering in the desert yeah. with the ark, yeah. they had a tabernacle, which they took with them, and erected wherever they set camp. That's right. So you don't have to go anywhere to observe these things. If you can, if you can, yes. If you can, and I have, I've experienced the joy that is there in Yerushalayim. Because keeping it here, if we were to do the feast, right, we're going to do it here in this building. But imagine if the whole city was doing it. Hallelujah. The whole city shut down for the feast. That's what happens in Yerushalayim. When you go home, everybody's on Moedim. Everybody's on lockdown. It's Shabbat, Lakar. It's just a different mindset. In fact, there's a spirit on the city yes. oh. of rejoicing. Wow. There's a spirit that we are here to celebrate the feast. Wow. So there's a big difference. But my brothers made a good point that if you, if the mountain can't come to Muhammad, if Muhammad can't come to the mountain, the mountain comes to Muhammad. I'm using that proverb. 
that Yeshua was the rock in the wilderness with them. He was the covering, the hoopah with them. So in other words, the, the temple was a type of Yeshua. He's with you even when you can't get to him. He'll come to you. But the ultimate goal is that you will get to reach Lion. And the Bible speaks of this quite clearly, that all of us want to go but can't go. But there's a time coming when he will liberate us all so we can go to reach Lion. And it says, Who do, whosoever does not come to reach Lion, no rain shall fall on your land. Zachariah. Hallelujah. Right? Hallelujah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Right, so Moses reads before all the people the book of the covenant that Yahuwah has given Israel. After the people committed to keeping the laws of Yahuwah, Moses sprinkles blood upon the altar and on the people as well, since all covenants are formally ratified, meaning approved, and are usually sealed with blood. Exodus 24, verses 7 to 8. Likewise, the new covenant was sealed with the blood of the Messiah, Yeshua, the Lamb of Yahuwah, at the Passover meal with his disciples, Yeshua held up the cup of redemption and said, This cup which is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood, Luke 22, 20. The most righteous of all men, Yeshua HaMashiach, became the final atonement for all generations who accept his sacrifice on their behalf. We sometimes miss out the half Torah as well, the prophetic reading for the Mishpatim. Now the half Torah Mishpatim opens with a covenant with that King Zedekiah, last king of the first temple time. And the people of Yerushalayim made with each other before Yahuwah his holy temple. In the covenant they agreed to free the Hebrew slaves, or had been held longer than the prescribed term of six years. Sadly it seemed the people tried to manipulate Yahuwah by freeing their slaves as Yahuwah commanded so that he would turn back siege forces coming against Yerushalayim. Once those siege forces turned back, the people broke the covenant by forcing the free men and women back into slavery. Remember, Yahuwah reminds them of the seriousness of his covenant with each other by including in Jeremiah whose prophecy their act of walking between the two halves of a slaughtered animal. To go back to the conclusion of the Torah portion, it ends with this magnificent cinematic experience uh, and scene where Moshe goes up with um, his two main helpers but then the 70 elders and then they have this supernatural experience that so many may miss in scripture that they go up the mountain of Yah and all of a sudden, they are transported. Yeah. It's no longer a mountain. They're at the throne room of the kingdom. And they see stone, blue stone of sapphire. This pavement of sapphire. They're seeing the streets of the throne. It's just amazing. And they start to have dinner. But it's not just dinner. They're having the welcome supper with the lamb. And this is an amazing thing. They're having this amazing supper with the king, which is all a shadow and a type of us. The 70 nations from Rishid, the 70 elders, will come before the, th the throne of the Lamb and will all sit at the welcome supper um, table with the Lamb himself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And it's a beautiful way to conclude the Torah portion. Absolutely. And why such gory scenes now? I'm just, it's not, not much long now. Covenants are not to be taken lightly. As covenant parties walk through these bloodied carcasses, they saw the punishment to themselves of violating the covenant they made. They would also be cut in two, metaphorically, if not literally. Yahuwah chastised the people for violating the covenant they made. They also violated the law Yahuwah gave their ancestors when they left Mitzrayim, Egypt or Kemet, to free slaves after six years of work. As a result, Yahuwah promised to release famine, pestilence, and the sword over the city to bring Babylon against Yerushalayim, which occurred under Zedekiah's watch. Still today, we cannot make a covenant with Yahuwah in order to get a particular result. In this case, the safety of Yerushalayim. And then, renegade, go back on 
on our agreement once we get what we want. Just as Yahuwah had his eyes on the covenant made with Zedekiah, he has his eyes on the covenants and the promises that we make with him and with one another. So in conclusion, what do we take from here through this Torah portion? How do I apply this in my life? Many have falsely said that Yahuwah is finished with his chosen people. However, Bible prophecy clearly states that this will never be so. In fact, in these last days, Yahuwah is moving among his people to physically and spiritually restore them. Hallelujah. Us, the Hebrews, Israelites. Hallelujah. Thanks, Brother Robert. Thank you. A little lengthier, but it was meaty and it was lovely. We really enjoyed that and we could have carried on. I like that. That was really good. Thank you, Robbie. Wonderful. Torah portion. I encourage you to really go through it. We've been given a tour, we've been given an instruction, and it is very relevant to today. Let's wrap it all up. We've been here for quite some time. I'm sure many of you probably I'm going to get home. When, we, when they open up the ark and the Torah is put out and the Torah is made visible, I want you to bear that in mind. Yeshua made the Torah visible and he brought it within your proximity. So the Torah will go back in. So as a sign of respect, let's all stand. As we say the closing blessing, we're going to have the Kiddush and then we're going to close our service. So I'm hoping that you can all stay in the Kiddush. This is the closing blessing. The giving Father, thank you, Father, for today. Thank you for this Torah portion that the teacher brought to us today. Thank you for the unveiling of your Torah. And now we return the Torah back to its rightful place. The Ark represents your heart. So the Torah is meant to be sealed within your heart. Altogether, blessed are you, Yahuwah, our Creator, King of the universe, who has given us a Torah of truth and has planted eternal life in our midst. Blessed are you, Yahuwah, giver of the Torah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. So lift up your prayer today. Honor him today. As you say the blessing. Baruch Atah. Yahuwah Elohim. Yassah Malek Ha'olah. Mamasi Lachem. Mishamayim. Blessed are you, Yahuwah. Our power and creator. King of the universe. Who brings the Lord of prayer from the heavens. Eat together. I will seal the covenant by taking the cup of wine through juice today. That will be the seal, the perfection, the culmination that you have accepted the covenant that you are waiting on. This is for the bride. So this is not for those who have not yet made covenant. This is for the bride that is set apart for Yeshua. months and I can have the condition with you. Hallelujah. It's been, it was hard at first because you have to read everything. You would not believe what vinegar is in. When you take the Nazareth bar, you can't have vinegar. Not just wine, vinegar. And everything they put, spirit vinegar. In every, even bread. Bread has spirit vinegar and malt vinegar. Everything. I wonder why. Do the research, somebody. Come and tell me why. Spirit vinegar. Those of you who don't understand or know about the Nazarite vow, the prohibition is that you cannot come near the dead. So I can't attend any funerals. Nobody, please don't die. Okay. I won't be there. Can't drink wine, can't cut your beard, can't cut your hair, any kind of hair. <laughs> I'm looking grizzly. And you can't drink vinegar. But, wow, is it a cleanse? And wow, how you feel set apart. So, since that time till now, I can feel the breakthrough. I can see the breakthrough. And I know what power I have access to. And I know the enemy is on the defensive even more. So I encourage you to fast and pray and take part in activating the covenant in such means as the Nazarite vow. Okay, let us look up. Baruch Atah, Yahuwah, Blessed are you, Yahuwah, our power and imagination, the king of the universe, in grace of fruit of the vine. Drink together and say, Lachai. 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 Lachai is a life. Sprinkle the books and sprinkle the people. 
you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. They were, we are. And we will not precede them. They will resurrect before us. Hallelujah. I exhort you, therefore, brothers, in view of Yahweh's mercy, read it with me, to offer yourselves as a sacrifice, living and set apart for Yahweh. This will please him. It is the logical temple worship for you. The Lamb was always a prefiguration of Yeshua, but you are also meant to be the Lamb. And we sing our song to bid one another farewell, but we are friends in here. You're not just friends of Yahuwah, we are friends. So, Shalom Havarim, Shalom Havarim, Shalom. Shabbat meal waiting for you as well. Shabbat Tov, everyone. Has a blessed, blessed week. Take care, and we'll see you soon. Please do stay in touch with your Harvard Facebook page and the YouTube channel, and we'd love to hear from you all. Shabbat Shalom. All my life I've been waiting for, I've been praying for, for the people to say that we don't want to fight no more. There'll be no more war, and our children will play one day. One day